Welcome to our quick video about how to get started using Decipher Backup Browser. Once you've installed Decipher Backup Browser, you can launch it on a Mac from the Applications folder, or on Windows from the Desktop icon or the Start Menu icon. When the program first starts up, you're going to see a small window that says Backups Loaded, and in this window you're going to see a list of uh, the various iTunes backups that you have. Uh, and where they're located on your hard drive and a little bit of information about the device that the backup is for and when it was made. Once the backups have been loaded, in the main part of the window, you'll see a listing of your various devices for which you have a backup listed along this left-hand side. One thing to note is you may have different backups for the same device, like I have two listed here for Kelly's iPhone 4S. In a little bit, we'll talk about how to manage your backups and how to keep around multiple backups if you want to do that since iTunes normally just keeps around the most recent backup. If I click on one of these backups, uh, for example this one right here from earlier in April, you'll see a listing of some of the information that's in your iTunes backup. There's one listing that is all of the items in the iTunes backup and then we pulled out some of the more popular and interesting data that most people tend to be looking for. For example, if I click on camera roll data, I'll see a listing from the same all items, but just showing me the camera roll only information. Uh, and if I look on here within my backup, it looks like I had about six images on my camera roll at the time that the backup was made. Uh, and if I double click on one, it will open in the default image previewing uh, application on your computer, whether you're on Mac, and that's likely Preview, or on Windows, and it might be the Windows Image and Fax Viewing program. Another thing you can do, uh, in addition to just double clicking to open it, if you're interested in saving some of the files, I can click Save, uh, and I'm going to save it to my desktop, and then all of the uh, information, all the files that you've selected will be saved outside of your backup in a location of your choosing. We'll talk about that more in a minute. You might be curious about some of these icons with the little red X. Uh, and these are files that were listed in the contents of the backup, uh, but there's no actual information in the backup. In this case, that makes sense uh, because I have an iPhone 4S, and within the camera roll data, there are these older folders uh, for previous versions of the camera software. Uh, and if I had older photos from older devices in my camera roll, they would be in these folders. But since I don't actually have any older device image information, the folders are listed, but there's nothing in them, so they don't really exist. Uh, you might also find some of the things like the voice memo data, if you have backed up voice memos that you need to recover, or just curious to listen to old voice memos, they're listed here. Uh, as I mentioned before, they're also listed in this all items that we'll talk about in a minute, uh, but sometimes it's nice to just jump straight there. Uh, another interesting thing, uh, all of the information saved locally from all of the apps can be pulled from this application save data area, which is also in the all items under app here. So you'll see underneath app, I have all the listings of the identifiers for the apps that were on this phone at the time the backup was made. And if I open up one of these folders, I can see that any information that was stored locally, and I mean on the phone uh, from that app, will be in the backup uh, in the documents and library folders uh, for that app. For example, for this social chair app, uh, I have this fo file here, and it's all the information about the different message lists because Social Chair sends text messages to groups of recipients, so I have my different groups of recipients. Another interesting thing to note, uh, you'll notice that this, the format of this file is a plist file. Uh, and on the Mac, that opens up in this little plist viewer, and it takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, but you kind of click around the disclosures to look at the various items. Uh, you'll see a lot of plist property list files that either contain data like this or they might contain uh, some settings. 
and we'll see one of those if I open up my Facebook app underneath preferences I can see a list of my Facebook data preferences and some saved data from that app uh, and one thing to note about this even if the apps don't have iTunes file sharing on uh, you can still get to the information within the backup uh, of the documents directory whether or not they had iTunes file sharing enabled in the app uh, when the backup was made. So that's kind of nice if you need to recover or extract information from one of your apps that saves information locally. I mentioned that on the Mac these plist files show up in this property list viewer. On Windows if you double click the files they will appear uh, sort of as a HTML XML formatted uh, so that they're readable in a browser like Internet Explorer. Uh, if you're more used to working with files of, this, of these types or you want to open them in a different program, uh, instead of double clicking them, you can save them. And again, I'll save this to the desktop. And you'll get a copy of the file and then you can open it however you want if you have a, a different program in mind than the default one. Let's close out the app and look at another interesting section such as Home Library, which contains a lot of the core data rather than uh, third-party app, sort of more core information from your iPhone, such as the address book uh, and calendar information. You'll notice that a lot of this kind of data is stored in these SQLite database files, either .db or .sqlite or .sqlite.db, all the different combinations. If you have a program that will read SQLite databases, uh, if you double click it, it might open by default and you can browse around the data. Uh, you may also find that you need to save it. Again, we'll save it to the desktop. And then you may need to open it uh, separately in the program of your choosing. On our website, we have a few suggestions uh, for programs to read these database files. In the first non-beta version of Decipher Backup Browser, we'll have our own integrated browser, uh, integrated program for viewing these SQLite databases in a more human-readable format. One of the ways I like to actually read these database files is to use the Firefox SQLite uh, extension. So if you have Firefox, it's a good extension to download to read these and it's on our website. So we poked around a little bit uh, at the listing of the information that's in your backup and hopefully you will enjoy poking around and looking at all the information. I certainly like kind of exploring and seeing what information is there and stored on my phone. So we should talk about how iTunes stores the backups so that if you want to keep around multiple backups instead of just the most recent one, you can do that. So if we take a look at this backups loaded a window again, you'll see that it mentions the location of the iTunes backups and shows you the individual folders of the iTunes backup uh, for each backup. On a Mac, you can go to this folder in Finder uh, by just clicking on home, that's the users and your username, and library, application support, mobile sync, and backup. On Windows, what I like to do is copy this whole location, starting with the likely C colon backslash, and then I copy it into the address bar on Internet Explorer, and it opens up the same kind of file explorer window just like that. Uh, it's a nice shortcut of a way to get there. So within this backup folder, uh, you'll see a listing of folders uh, for the different iOS backups. You can see in mine, the folders all have these sort of relatively readable names. Uh, when iTunes first makes the backup, it looks more like one of these guys here. Let's move this to the right spot. Uh, it's this long sort of numbers and letters identifier for the device. And that's the way that iTunes keeps all of your different iOS devices separate and knows which one is which. When you make a new I backup in iTunes by right-clicking on your device and selecting backup, we can do that real quick. I would right-click on this phone and select backup. And if I go back to my little window here, you can see that there's no new folder being made. 
because this is the unique identifier for that device. And so it just overwrote that folder. What you can do if you'd like to keep around multiple backups of the same device is to go to this folder and rename this uh, to something that you recognize that's different. So I'm going to name it Kelly3. And what this will do is essentially hide that backup from iTunes because it isn't that unique identifier number anymore. So the next time that you make a backup, a new folder is created for the new backup and your old one is untouched. So I hope this video was helpful in getting started using Decipher Backup Browser to browse the contents of your iOS backups. This is our first beta of the Decipher Backup Browser, so we're certainly looking for input about how it's been helpful to you or if you have suggestions on how to improve the program. Please feel free to click the Help button and visit our website. And if you have suggestions or comments about the program, you can click on the support link and then send us an email and we would love to hear your feedback about Decipher Backup Browser. Thanks.